Here we are again, so after Orly Group we are ready to go ahead and deal with the next topic, that is to say a trend of cross-section innovation, that is to say in, in artificial intelligence in the automotive industry. So artificial intelligence at 360 degrees, we'll talk about that with the companies involved in this important moment. But before doing that and before talking about the different companies that uh, will um, share with us their uh, experiences, I would like to uh, invite Massimo Brunamonti. Welcome back. And uh, welcome back. Hello, everyone. Okay, so now also uh, let us greet Mr. Silvano Guelfi from the uh, Polytechnic of Turin. Uh, Professor Guelfi, good afternoon. And then uh, artificial intelligence. Well, this is the uh, topic of this uh, session. So, of course, artificial intelligence involved. And what are the consequences within the supply chain? Um, because, of course, uh, we have to consider uh, whether artificial intelligence is just something fashionable in this moment or if it's something that really entails a number of paradigms to be implemented, especially when it comes to the aftermarket. Please, you have the floor. Thank you. So artificial intelligence is a, uh, a technical and intellectual movement with huge consequences on the entire supply chain and consequences on our lives and also with huge effects on uh, uh, the automotive industry. So involving the entire, let's say, chain. So if we were to say that we are ready as a sector, as companies involved in this sector, well, this is a premature statement, let's put it this way, whereas if we say that we are starting to become uh, curious about what artificial intelligence is and what are the effects that it can trigger, yeah, well, this is something we can say. In several research centers, both in Italy and uh, abroad, um, so uh, many uh, universities and many centers are now trying to uh, enable uh, concrete uh, use of artificial intelligence because, of course, uh, the main effect will be uh, the use of artificial intelligence by us as the men in the street, as the people in the street, not just the experts that use it. So that is going to be uh, an epoch-making uh, moment, but I have to say that for the time being I like to uh, conjugate this uh, uh, approach uh, with our main reference to the future. Uh, by paying attention to the Italian experience in the automotive sector and the need to allow all of the uh, items in a supply chain, well, they have to be interconnected, otherwise something is leaking here and there. Well, in this case, I would say that we are not entirely ready as a system. So it is a challenge that we have to face and that involves what we need to do in the future. Well, the effects will be abrupt, of course, and um, if we consider a couple of important items, is to say uh, the uh, uh, privacy and confidentiality of data and the legal aspects relating to, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, aspects relating to damages that can uh, uh, derive from a malfunctioning or a known alignment of uh, digital applications, uh, which have to be, of course, uh, uh, disseminated and synchronized, well, uh, once these two steps are somehow overcome and solved, I'm sure we're going to get some uh, concrete benefits and advantages that are going to be extremely important. Of course, from the uh, economic standpoint, there will be uh, efficiency, of course, and also a use of resources in a uh, targeted way. 
and therefore this is going to be uh, beneficial uh, because I'm sure uh, we will waste less in the future especially when it comes to the use of resources. So, of course, we're going to have a better quality uh, from the standpoint of uh, work or operators, because all of the operators, well, part of them are already working towards this direction. That is to say they are interconnected, but we will all be, let's say, more informed. Uh, we'll get more data that once together generate information. Um, so we have to consider the other item, which is an open one. That is to say, besides developing applications and besides having systems that have to be interconnected and uh, operational when it comes to the meeting uh, of human needs, what's left is the main challenge, that is to say, to succeed in uh, uh, allowing human beings to have a correct, uh, let's say, uh, relationship with uh, uh, technologies. Because this is not a matter of laboratory, because when we talk about artificial intelligence, we have to consider it as a pervasive system, as a pervasive approach, and that will be part of all of the, uh, um, uh, of the all of the activities that are part of our lives. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Silvano Guelfi. Uh, back to you, Massimo. So, this is your home, uh, also because, uh, of course, uh, you are. Uh, part of one of the uh, companies that own the brand. Yeah, of course, thank you. Uh, and also because uh, uh, you, I guess, met also the association that I work for. Uh, yeah, of course, and we talked about circular economy this morning, but now we need to talk about something different. We're talking about artificial intelligence now. And in this connection, I'd like to, uh, let's say, uh, ask you to uh, manage uh, the uh, next session. Uh, yeah, in fact, we're going to have um, uh, Nicolini, uh, Carlo Rocchi, uh, Luciano Marton representing Texa, and they all represent a, an extraordinary, let's say, uh, representation of uh, primary companies involved in uh, the uh, aftermarket area. And I'd like to start with uh, Domenico Ferrara. All of us see uh, new vehicles, new types of vehicles that manage and uh, process huge quantities of data, millions of data used within the vehicle and exchanged and shared with the outer world. So this is also part of the artificial intelligence within the car. So uh, how is, uh, for instance, the uh, specific industry that you operate within dealing with this situation? Thank you and good afternoon. I start from a uh, research according to which when uh, we of course uh, uh, achieve the entire process uh, we're going to produce a, uh, a huge quantity of data, uh, which is something like, uh, for instance, uh, in a small ship, like having 2,600 movies HD. So think about the computing power of all this. The uh, main aspect, however, relates to uh, the uh, uh, functional, um, let's say, uh, security of the vehicle. So besides the maintenance of sensors, we have to consider the software that is within the car. As to the sensors, it is important to explain to the drivers that, of course, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, will play an increasingly uh, important role uh, when it comes to, uh, for instance, uh, automatic driving. And also, in order to be interpreted at best, well, data has to be of a high quality. Data has to be consistent. And this is at the basis of the need to, let's say, uh, weight sensors. So the use of uh, functional uh, tools and uh, devices will be increasingly important. 
And uh, I am talking about, for instance, the digital tools that we have in the car. And as to data and the access to data, we are already uh, witnessing, for instance, uh, situations in which non-authorized people access uh, data. So, of course, at a certain point, it is not possible any longer to consider that, for instance, uh, um, non-authorized people access data. So that is the reason why we have to develop the suitable uh, diagnostic instruments and also uh, to uh, safely and securely access the vehicle. But then once data is accessed, well, data will be so huge in terms of numbers uh, that in order to use the data, we need to have some, let's say, uh, interpretation tools. So the data has to be transformed into something that we can uh, use. So it is uh, a sort of uh, pathway that leads to an interpretation of data and to its availability. Let us move on to Luciano Marton, representing TEXA. And let's talk about another aspect, which is important as well. That is to say, a new business model that uh, the artificial intelligence will propose, uh, where services will be increasingly oriented towards a B2B approach. So how is this impacting on the development of equipment? What can you tell us about it? Good afternoon. So um, first of all, artificial intelligence speeds up a trend that is the one towards B2B models that has been uh, somehow in place for a few years now. In the automotive sector, uh, we've moved from uh, uh, models based on which the car was used to different models. Uh, that is to say, we've shifted from the ownership of the car to the availability and the use of the car. This is the reason why several market operators have developed themselves a lot, and I'm talking about uh, fleet managers and the fleet management sector as a whole, as well as a number of operators of advanced uh, services like, for instance, the paper use or care sharing. So, uh, for instance, uh, all of the um, a garage uh, that decided to uh, implement the right tools uh, to operate and work, well, they are at a good level of activity now. So the B2B models, as well as artificial intelligence per se, provide a huge momentum to technological innovation in equipment as well. and. There are two main aspects that we need to take into consideration when it comes to technological innovation. The first item is represented by, for instance, autonomous driving and all of the, um, let's say, uh, driver's assistance uh, tools. And also, uh, the equipment uh, that access a garage have to be digital native. So autonomous drive and others. Others already represent some small portions of autonomous driving that exist nowadays in the cars that we presently buy. And our garage and the garage in uh, the various territories in which we operate uh, have started to endow themselves with these technologies. And soon there will be the traditional, uh, let's say, uh, garage and also uh, tire uh, operators. I'm sure they will be involved. Other tools have to be innovated, and they are becoming uh, increasingly easy to use and automatic. But in the future, we have to think that in order to uh, suitably uh, adjust a, an autonomous vehicle, well, we need to have an artificial creation of the conditions that exist uh, when a proper driver is there. And, of course, that is the way through which we can check that sensors are suitably uh, adjusted and that the vehicle and the car uh, reacts as per the specifications of the manufacturer. Secondly, the digital native product. What do I mean by that? Uh, car repairers are used to use these objects. 
smartphones, of course, as we all do, and they use artificial intelligence solutions in their daily lives. For instance, uh, Google provides classified information which are customized to users. So these people, car repairers, expect to have a user experience which reproposes the type of use. So the digital native product is the one that succeeds in self-learning, so a self-learning approach that allows the product to be predictive and to predict the use in order to make users' lives easier. And it also means, consequently, that uh, guided procedures are set. Products have to be somehow updated because, of course, needs change over the time and we need to have products that, through software updates, uh, may adjust their performances. Um, that is going to be too long. Sorry, I have to uh, stop you here. We have a limited amount of time. And um, so, as uh, Professor Welfi said, connectivity. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, now, Carlo uh, Rocchi representing Male. There are some additional consequences when it comes to, uh, for instance, uh, artificial intelligence, like predictive maintenance and uh, scheduled interventions. So in this case as well, I'm sure you have additional um, developed and evolved uh, activities and architectures. Uh, so, um, extension of the uh, uh, life cycle of the car and uh, scheduled maintenance, well, this is part of the process. Technologies will be increasingly sophisticated and the extension of the life of the car doesn't mean less maintenance. Conversely, uh, through the maintenance and predictive maintenance, it is possible to have a continuous dialogue between uh, the car and the owner. And the owner will be invited to make uh, a number of um, uh, interventions before uh, a problem occurs. Because nowadays we go to the car repairer when we have a problem whereas we have to uh, somehow predict eventual problems. And, of course, this has to be part in car manufacturer's strategies because uh, they have to provide us with the same set of information that they provide to their official networks. Generally speaking, as regards, for instance, the uh, particular functions uh, uh, that are adopted by car manufacturers nowadays, which will uh, somehow increase the activity of car repairers, what, what matters is that uh, aftermarket networks are provided. And as regards us, um, well, we have to change our way of behaving. We have to change our way of presenting the equipment because with this uh, huge evolution that we are uh, registering in the uh, um, automotive sector, which is definitely fast, much faster than, for instance, what we can do in order to uh, uh, be constantly updated, well, we need to have, uh, for instance, uh, um, and we need to receive uh, information in order to bridge the gap that inevitably exists um, because we cannot always catch up and we cannot always uh, have the same pace as uh, the evolution of technologies. And all this has to be in line with the manufacturer's strategies that increasingly uh, have to help us uh, to uh, provide the suitable equipment to the aftermarket. Thank you. Roberto Nicolini, Nexion. Um, of course, we all deal with uh, uh, standards and uh, interfaces which are not homogeneous, which are not standardized, and we all have to deal with it. However, artificial intelligence, do you think artificial intelligence can help? Uh, and what are the options we have at our disposal in order to have uh, uh, developed uh, approaches versus the past? Well, thank you. Thank you, Massimo, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the automotive uh, sector is developing itself in a huge way. We talk about, for instance, uh, electrification and connected vehicles. And market researches and surveys say that by 2025, uh, 
70% of the fleet will involve connected vehicles, but this entails, for instance, a need to exchange information, and also we need to have increasingly technological uh, devices that have to support uh, the drivers. Artificial intelligence will entail some benefits and advantages because we will process more information in short time. We can understand with automatic learning, and then the complexity of the car will be easier for us. And therefore, the working approach of car repairs will evolve because the uh, um, interventions will be faster. And I'm sure that training will be needed and a higher degree of specialization will be uh, uh, needed. Also, for instance, when some electronic components have to be replaced. But that is going to be a huge opportunity as well as the development of new professional figures. So we are talking about, for instance, smart uh, equipment to manage the car in an easy way. So connectivity between, between the equipment and the garage, which has to be interactive up to the manufacturer. So this is also linked to the possibility to continue to access data within the vehicle and this must be done by the aftermarket operators. This is the reason why, together with the uh, various associations, we are now having dialogues with manufacturers in order to keep this access open, also when it comes to the repair of new generation vehicles. Uh, also because uh, this is uh, a part of the rights, let's say, of, uh, our, of us as operators. Uh, okay, so you are telling us that um, what Mr. Welfy was mentioning as something belonging to the future will happen soon. Okay, yeah, thank you. Last but not least, Marco Codeluppi. We all think that we have some important expectations when it comes to artificial intelligence in terms of uh, uh, comfort of use and also uh, user-friendly uh, software, which also are intuitive and easy to use. Uh, but do you think that the equipment as well is going to move towards that direction? What can you tell us? Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Massimo. Uh, my answer is, well, yes, the development of new solutions goes towards this direction. Car repairers already have at their disposal nowadays a number of equipment based on technology. And the main advantage is that it's possible to have flexibility and connectivity. So when we talk about connectivity, uh, we consider that uh, it is possible to, uh, for instance, uh, serve new generation vehicles. And I make an example. If we have smart cars, um, for instance, if you have to intervene and you have to, for instance, uh, uh, fix uh, the tires, uh, well, of course, this uh, procedure is somehow set by the manufacturer. And uh, this is the reason why, uh, also, for instance, when it comes to the towing, right? So it is the manufacturer that has to tell us uh, what the standards are. And therefore, we need to make the recovery of the car in a suitable and easy way. And also, we need to provide the utmost quality of the uh, results, for instance, through the towing. As to connectivity, we are now developing a number of uh, tools and devices. And, of course, um, the results are already uh, available. Uh, so we're going to use the web interfaces, allow us to use smartphones and uh, also tablets or uh, PCs. But most of all, to uh, uh, project, for instance, on large screens. So this flexibility allows to use our, uh, let's say, areas, uh, the areas in which we work. So we will not be surrounded by huge trolleys or huge containers. Rather, we have a tablet that is going to be our main uh, toolkit. And there, in this way, uh, it is possible for us to uh, have an automated approach, and then we immediately get the information available in the car. So through connectivity, uh, we can achieve this, this result. And for the time being, we have already, for instance, automated uh, the first phase, that is to say the phase in which uh, we make a preliminary check of the car. 
And of course, uh, we need to have a hardware that allows nowadays to manage smart systems and also our daily activities. So we're convinced that all of the equipment need to have clear specifications and comply with all of the restrictions in force. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, and thanks to all of you for uh, your contributions. And now I have a question to all of you, and please I ask you to reply uh, with a final and quick statement. Uh, today's and tomorrow's automotive uh, uh, industry and cars will need a number of uh, uh, checks entailing, for instance, uh, a safety and security frameworks. So it is not uh, yet fully enforced nowadays, but it's a pathway that we need to put in place. So how do you consider all this from the equipment standpoint? Carlo Rocchi, representing Male. Well, of course, the uh, equipment industry certainly has to deal with a uh, sort of bureaucracy within the system. If we consider what happens nowadays when it comes to the uh, diesel oil engines, well, of course, uh, the tests that are presently performed are not suitable and are not entirely complying with the provisions in force. So the same goes uh, when it comes to the ABS, uh, which is uh, somehow compulsory and uh, which is not always in place. And probably the same is going to happen uh, for uh, the smart car uh, systems. So it is necessary to uh, consider that uh, uh, control standards and quality standards have to be defined. Okay, thank you. Now, Luciano, Luciano Marton, I fully share what the colleague said, because besides uh, the uh, um, information that uh, policymakers need to provide us with, it is necessary to have more collaboration among us because the uh, security devices within the car have to be checked. And uh, for instance, uh, if the car by design uh, includes all of the procedures and all of the technical information that we have to avail ourselves of. And this is of paramount importance. Thank you, thank you, Luciano. Now, Roberto, Roberto Nicolini, Nexion. Well, the integration of the new systems on board will obviously need an accurate check. So it is necessary to dialogue with the vehicle and with the sensors. So of course, we're not just considering the uh, a check of the car um, as such with its components, but also with the uh, electronic uh, components. And the electronic components need an active check nowadays. So once again, this entails an exchange of data and information, and then the need to have a, a developed uh, approach. And in Europe, we're talking about new regulations relating to uh, the systems and, uh, for instance, uh, ADAS or all of the other rules that will come into force uh, shortly. So uh, all of the manufacturers uh, are ready to uh, accept and meet this challenge within the future perspective of uh, new generation vehicles. Domenico, the floor to you. Well, we are actually uh, developing a number of activities and uh, we know that uh, all of the systems have to be uh, perfectly developed. So we have worked with the trading associations and with the insurance companies in order to introduce all of these uh, compulsory controls as soon as possible, but this has to be somehow mandated by policymakers. What we know is that uh, the main goal is that in the future, everyone has to adopt the same approach when checking the car. Thank you. Marco, Marco Codeluppi. I share what the colleague said. 
we said that the know-how is fundamental and this is what we uh, actually rely upon and we've worked on other systems and also on uh, the exchange of information with the uh, governmental working groups. Furthermore, a technical element is, for instance, uh, represented by, uh, for instance, the use of LEDs. And we all know, for instance, the uh, uh, importance of LEDs. Um, so this is something that we have to take into account while revising the car, while checking the car. And we also have a lot of pilot projects. And of course, uh, while checking the car, uh, these activities are preliminary for managing the future activities, but the change is here already. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, Barbara, uh, it seems to me that we are talking about the future, uh, but the future is now. And it seems to me that the uh, um, information shares by the colleagues refers to a number of equipment that, well, the equipment uh, is definitely evolved. But let's give the floor back to Professor Welfi. And uh, okay, so Professor Welfi from the Polytechnic of Turin, you have the floor again. So share with us your point of view about what we've said so far. And of course, we've had a lot of contributions and uh, also uh, it is important now to get your feedback. Yeah, good afternoon and good to see you again. So definitely, um, I share all of the different points of view. Oh, Professor, please switch your camera on. Okay, now we can see you. Um, so, uh, now, once again, I repeat my question. So, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, I cannot but share, fully share the um, opinions of the uh, previous speakers. And I am also confident that all of the uh, companies involved are somehow working um, with a great deal of quality on the future and on future activities. Uh, then the need will come, that is to say, a legislative nature, uh, a legislative activity has to be considered because we need to have standards and we need to have rules and provisions which have to be the same for all and which also for uh, the uh, positive uh, situation of the entire system, there has to be a free competition. This is an important aspect um, because uh, we are talking about the development of our economy, but we have to comply with a uh, principle that cites the economic one and which is the uh, uh, safety of people and also um, the uh, security of information. So we are talking about those involved in uh, the development of uh, equipment and also uh, for professionals and end users. So I see a huge activity that has to be uh, carried out from the regulatory standpoint and also for the development of standards allowing to operate uh, on the level playing field and also by exploiting resources at best. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Massimo, do you all agree? Do you agree with what we said so far? Well, I cannot but agree. And of course, this is the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, now we are about to meet some important institutional representatives. Uh, so uh, in particular, we have these uh, region uh, of our country, which is the Motor Valley. So before coming to our conclusions, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for your contributions today in this digital conference. And uh, uh, we also said on several occasions that our country never stops. Our country continues to operate with a view to the, in the economic development and uh, with a great deal of optimism. 
So I'm sure that next year an energy will be needed and efforts will be needed, but optimism and also uh, cohesion will be needed in order to achieve important goals. So thank you for uh, uh, spending uh, your day with us.